Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is an IFBB Pro Classic Physique Athlete. Today's guest is Daniel Sullivan. Daniel, welcome to the podcast. I appreciate it, man. Good to be here. For sure. So, Daniel, I'm excited to chop it up with you, my man. Um, I like to kind of start each conversation by uh, asking uh, my guests the same two questions. So, the first question I have for you is, who are a few of your favorite bodybuilders of all time? Man, uh, definitely Lee Labrada. He's, uh, he's somebody that I, you know, love watching. I mean, I still watch his videos to this day and Hunter's a good friend of mine. So, um, you know, it just goes hand in hand, but, uh, Lee's definitely one of my favorites, just, you know, that classic look. And, uh, like I said, his posing is just phenomenal. And I, you know, I strive to be more like that, you know, whenever I'm on stage. So, um, him, and then another one's going to be, uh, my good friend, Johnny Jackson. He's, uh, he's been behind me. Uh, I would, I mean, since day one of classic physique, um, you know, always hyping me up. He's been in my corner. Um, just a good guy to talk to, you know, at all times about bodybuilding life. And, um, when I worked at destination, he was also there, you know, as a lifter and, uh, you know, with gasp. And so it's just been good to have him, you know, around and he's, I can say probably one of my all time favorites as well. Awesome, man. Love that. So, uh, tell us, Daniel, at what age did you start lifting weights? And then why did you start lifting weights at that age? So I started lifting at pretty early age, uh, honestly, probably around fifth grade, um, you know, 12, 12 years old. Um, main reason was, uh, I got into health and fitness just because my mom, actually, my mom had cancer, had a 10% chance of living and our family kind of just switched gears and started just getting on that healthy train. And, uh, ever since then, man, I, you know, dad would wake me up quarter of five in the morning and go to the YMCA. And, you know, so I started lifting probably, yeah, I'd say around 11 or 12 years old, really. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, I kind of like to use that last question, Daniel, just to kind of transition to my guests, uh, backstory. Cause it's always kind of fun just to hear where, um, these athletes, these coaches kind of yeah. came from. Right. So tell us a little bit about your childhood. Talk about where you grew up, talk about, you know, uh, maybe when your mom did get cancer, it sounds like yep. that was a very pivotal, uh, part in your guys's life, including yours. So, uh, talk about sports you played, um, up to about high school and then we'll transition. Okay. Sounds good. So I'm originally from Mobile, Alabama, grew up born and raised there. Um, and like I said, I, I started working out at an early age and it was due to my mom, you know, having cancer. And we, like I said, we just wanted to kind of switch gears a little bit, get into the health and fitness. And uh, so that kind of started me on my journey right there. And um, I started wrestling probably around that age as well. I was a wrestler. Um, I traveled for that. I was in Georgia, Alabama, Florida. And uh, that kind of transitioned into high school as well. Um, you know, I wrestled throughout middle school, high school. Um, I was always a baseball player and football player, but um, wrestling was kind of my passion. And uh, actually from there, I, I went on to fight professionally, um, mixed martial arts. So, um, you know, that was that was kind of, you know, my background with sports. And, you know, I've always been involved in something and uh, just a competitive person, man, that, you know, I've always been competitive. Um, you know, even when I fought professionally, it was uh, it was never about fighting. Even my family is like, what are you doing? Like, this is not who you are. And, uh, you know, it's not who I am. I'm just, like I said, it was a chess match to me. And, uh, I just looked at it that way. And I mean, I look at, you know, competing that way today is just, I'm super competitive and, uh, you know, coming from that background of wrestling and, and fighting second place is losing. So, you know, I have that mentality going into bodybuilding as well. And I don't like to lose, man. For sure. For sure. I, I, I like that mindset and I, I want to get into that a little bit more, but before we do, um, what was school like for you? Were, were you competitive in school or was school just something you kind of had to do growing up? You know, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I don't want to say it was something I just had to do, but I was, uh, you know, I was terrible at test taking. Like that was, that was, that was the thing. That was more my sister's thing. She, uh, she was the one with, you know, the brains in school. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to say I got by, but I made good grades, you know, but um, I was so focused on sports and, you know, uh, you know, what I wanted to do when I grew, you know, grew up and got older. And that's where my mind was really focused on. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, again, I made good grades, but, you know, my drive was just so much more. And I knew I didn't want to be a lawyer or a doctor, you know, that's not something I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, like I said, 
just getting through school was definitely my number one thing, but I wanted to get out of school and get on to the next thing in my life. Amen to that. I can definitely relate to that. And probably a lot of, <laughs> a lot of dudes out there listening and watching can probably agree with that. Now, yeah. um, before we transition a little bit further into your story, I want to ask you about your parents. Um, what, what did they instill in you? Or um, was there something maybe that your mom or your dad always said to you that kind of still sticks into your mind? What, what was it that you kind of gleaned or gained uh, from your parents growing up? You know, my parents, uh, they were always really loving, you know, supported me in anything I did. I mean, it didn't matter what sport I played. They, they wouldn't care if I was in the band. You know, they wouldn't care if I played football. <clears throat> they just wanted to support me. And, uh, you know, one thing that they've just really instilled in me, especially growing up and, you know, through sports and even bodybuilding is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, just be a good person. You know, just at the end of the day, be a good person be humble, um, be confident, but be humble, you know, and uh, I think that that's carried me a long way through my journey is, uh, you know, I, I don't like burning bridges, I don't like stepping on toes, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming with it, whatever I do. So, you know, I think they instilled that humbleness in me and, um, you know, gave me confidence, gave me enough confidence to, you know, be confident in what I do, whatever I'm doing. And uh, that's something that I really cherish, and, you know, something that they gave me. Excellent, man. Love that. Okay, so when you were uh, when you were a younger kid, you know, in high school, that's kind of when most of us start thinking about post high school, what we want to be when we quote unquote grow up. Um, yep. You know, a lot of us that played sports growing up, we want to be a professional athlete, but at some point, you realize that might not happen. But yep. you did say that you you were a, a professional fighter. So talk about what what were you thinking about in terms of uh, what you want to do when you grew up, or kind of when you wanted to uh, what what you want to do after you graduate high school, and then after you graduated high school, how did life kind of unfold for you? So, you know, going up through high school, um, my, my high school, we were number seven in the country in high school baseball. So, you know, that was, we were sleeping it, breathing it, eating it. I mean, that's all I did year round. We traveled and, uh, you know, that's, you know, I wanted to make my parents happy and proud really. Um, and I wanted to be a professional athlete. That was always my number one goal is like, I want to be a professional athlete. I want to I want to give back to my parents. That was always what I wanted to do. Give back to my parents and show them, you know, what they did for me, you know, growing up, it's appreciated and it paid off. And uh, <clears throat> getting out of high school, I had baseball scholarships and I ended up turning down baseball. Um, and uh, I don't want to say they were happy about that just because, you know, I was, I was a good athlete and uh, they felt like it was kind of a waste. And so when I went to college, um, I started jujitsu and started fighting and um, they didn't understand it at all. You know, they thought it was just, you know, me getting in a ring, basically a, a cock fight, getting in there and just beating the hell out of each other. Um, but it, it, it kind of took them to come to a fight. They came to one of my fights and really understood what I was trying to do. And, um, you know, when I turned, when I turned pro in fighting, that was, you know, that was kind of a staple in my career just because that was something I always wanted to give back to them. But at the same time, that lifestyle is very, very, very hard to live. Um, as you can see now, guys aren't making the money that they used to make. And, you know, it's really hard to make a career out of that. I actually have UFC fighters that I train um, and write nutrition for. And they have second and third jobs, you know, which is crazy because they're a professional athlete. And you would think these guys are making tons of money. And it's not true at all. And uh, so, you know, whenever I got done fighting, that was uh, – 2012, I, uh, I moved to Dallas, Texas, and I started at Destination Dallas, which was, you know, an amazing gym over in Dallas, Texas, uh, and uh, Gasp and Better Bodies were in there, and I got approached by a coach in there, and he was like, hey, man, you want to compete? And I, I had no idea what he was even talking about, so uh, I was like, yeah, man, I'll give it a shot, and, you know, ever since then, 2012, um, I started Men's Physique. And, uh, man, I fell in love with bodybuilding. I, I, you know, it's, uh, it's been a therapy for me. And, you know, ever since I got over into bodybuilding, that was another thing that I just told myself was, you know, I got, I want to give back to my parents. I want to show them that this is paid off, you know, being a professional athlete. And it took me, it took me almost 10 years to turn pro. And, um, uh, that journey was everything, man. It, it, they've, they appreciate it. You know, my dad was, like, <laughs> my dad's not a big bodybuilding fan, but you know, when I turned pro, he was like, man, what do I tell my friends? You know, I'm like, tell them, I, you know, I'm in the same league Arnold Schwarzenegger's in, you know, I, I, I did it. And uh, my mom's been at, you know, most of my shows and, 
you know, just the support they give me is absolutely unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I, I feel very blessed to have that, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. So, um, before we get into bodybuilding, talk a little bit more in depth, uh, Daniel, yep. talk to me about, uh, the MMA stuff just a little bit. Cause I, yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure you and, and myself are probably around the same age. And I know back in yeah. the early to mid two thousands, that's when, you know, the UFC really became, yep. uh, you know, what it is today. Yes. And, uh, there was just a lot of attraction, I think for some of us younger guys, yep. uh, maybe getting out of sports to get into fighting and stuff Absolutely. like that. So talk about that. Was that kind of, did you just first see it on TV? That was, was that the initial draw? And then tell yeah. me what you really learned, what you gained from your years as a fighter, please. So back in 2007, I, uh, I ended up going to Auburn uh, for college and uh, they had a freestyle team up there, a uh, jujitsu team and, and wrestling team. And so I, I started going with them and practicing and six months later they asked me if I wanted to fight and I was like yeah I guess I got all you know so I fought outside in an outside arena in front of the entire student body it was a big deal and uh I fell in love with it the rush was absolutely in incredible never experienced anything like that in my life um and from then I actually left college um went back to Mobile Alabama and, uh, you know, just trying to figure out my life a little bit, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, I was a poor college kid. I wanted to make money. And um, I ended up stumbling across uh, just through just through friends, a guy named Alan Belcher. Um, Alan Belcher fought 185 in the UFC, and he's a great friend of mine today. I actually write his nutrition for Bare Knuckle. Um, but he uh, I went over and I started training with him in Biloxi, Mississippi. And like I said, man, that I, it felt like a family to me over there. And I literally trained from, you know, that day on and trained with those guys. I'm talking Ben Askren, you know, he was in there. We had guys named Dean Lister, um, just a lot of great names that were coming to the gym. And, um, you know, these guys saw potential in me and I thought that was, you know, pretty awesome in itself. And uh, I fought in Biloxi, Mississippi, you know, I fought at the casinos. I've Herb Dean's been my fight in Memphis, Tennessee. You know, I've had some great, great experiences with fighting. And uh, I think it was, uh, you know, it was definitely a stepping stone, but I think it was uh, an awesome thing for me to do mentally, um, which carried me over into what I do now. I think, uh, you know, to have that, that mental toughness is, is number one in both of these sports. You know, I think you got to have that. You got to have your head on straight. And, uh, you know, it's, it's got to be all lined up. And I think, like I said, fighting really did that for me. Um, just because, I mean, you're training for a guy, you know, three months, every three months, and that guy's training to take your face off, you know, and that's something you got to sleep at night with. And, you know, it could be the next Mike Tyson. That's what I was telling a guy yesterday. You never know who you're fighting. It could literally be an up and coming Mike Tyson who could, you know, knock you the hell out or, you know, it could, you know, it could, it could be a stepping stone in your career too. So, you know, just having those thoughts and that adrenaline all the time, that is, uh, that was something that I just absolutely loved. It was, it was an amazing thing. Excellent. So you said, uh, after you were, uh, finished in 2012 with your, uh, MMA fighting career, you found yourself in, uh, uh, Dallas at destination Dallas. Now, how did you find out about destination Dallas and how did that door open for you to kind of go there and start, uh, training there and, 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 uh, working there, so to speak. So funny because I moved when I moved to Dallas, I was working out at Planet Fitness and uh, I had I had no other you know gym to go to. Um, three months later, Destination actually opened. It was their first grand opening. And the talk around town was, you know, hey, you got to go check this gym out. This is, you know, an amazing gym. There's a lot of athletes that work out here. So I went and checked it out. And uh when I went and checked it out, I, like I said, I fell in love with the atmosphere, the, the hardcore atmosphere that it had, you know, guys slinging around weight everywhere, dropping weights, you know, which I wasn't used to at Planet Fitness. Um, so, you know, I, I love being around that type of atmosphere. And um, I mean, I was there since month three, month four of even opening. And I would say about a, not even a year later, they offered me a job there. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been with, you know, Destination Dallas and I mean, for a long, long time until this day, they still sponsor me with Better Bodies and Gas. Very cool. So let's talk about then when you uh, started getting into uh, competing as a, uh, a bodybuilder or as a, a men's physique athlete. 
Um, talk about your first competition. And, and you said it took you almost 10 years to turn pro. And I love it when guys are on the podcast that had to grind and it, and it took years because that's the reality for most people. It's not, Absolutely. most people aren't the Phil Heath and they're going to be right. pro and on the Olympia stage within a year or two. So talk about um, competing as a men's physique athlete, talk about uh, transitioning into classic physique and just yep. talk about maybe some of those highlights as a competitor uh, up gotcha. to the point when you turned pro last year, please. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, started in men's physique. Um, I did the heart of Texas was my very first show and uh, you know, being the confident person that I was, I thought I went in, you know, I thought I looked great. I ended up placing the last call out, which was, I think, fourth call out. I got, I got my ass kicked. <laughs> That's all there is to it. And I'm going to tell you, man, that, that lit a fire under me. It really did. Because like I told you before, you know, losing and fighting second place is losing. So that lit a fire under me immediately. And uh, I actually ended up hiring a coach. I actually hired Jason Poston as my coach. Um, Jason was my coach for uh, two or three shows. And so my second show ever, um, I did the Pittsburgh Pro. It was the Pro-Am. And I went up there and I placed uh, fifth out of about 27 guys. And uh, from there, I went the next week. My third show ended up winning the Dallas Europa in 2014. So um, that was, you know, amazing, an amazing feeling. And from then, you know, I had, I had people coming up to me going, hey, maybe, you know, I think you can do this. So, you know, I competed uh, for a, a couple more years of men's physique get my butt whooped in nationals. I mean, I wasn't even looked at, man. And uh, I remember going down to nationals uh, 2015, I believe is what it was. And Steve Weinberger actually approached me after uh, one of the shows. And he said, hey, man, we have a new category coming about. And I think it'd be perfect for you. I mean, your legs are coming through your, you know, your board shorts. You're about to pop out of them. I think this is going to be perfect for you. So 2016 rolls around. And my first show ever with uh, Classic Physique, I hired, uh, actually hired Cash Guidry um, as my coach. And uh, I won the overall at the Kuklo, uh, excuse me, the Kuklo Classic in uh, Dallas. Won the overall, my first classic show. Um, went from there, went down to the Bayou Classic, placed second. And uh, I felt like I was on a roll. But, you know, from then, went to uh, South Carolina and uh, got my butt whooped. And that was actually the year Robert Timms turned pro. And uh, he was just looking like an animal. And I thought I did too, but you know, it was like, okay, we got to go back to the drawing board. I'm not big enough. I was, you know, I was shredded, but I wasn't big enough. And uh, man, that continued for the next, you know, three to four years. And till I started getting more size, you know, I was still, I was winning shows. Um, you know, I was still winning overalls, but I was going to nationals and just getting blasted. Um, so in 2019, I went up to a team universe. And uh, I ended up placing last, literally last call out again and uh, just had no idea, you know, what was going on. And uh, 2019, I actually ended up moving from Dallas down to the Virgin Islands. So I moved down to the Virgin Islands and then obviously COVID hit. So it kind of gave me another year off of competing. I didn't compete. And uh, I, you know, I just really got in tune with myself and really just took a step back and realized what I needed to do. And moving to that island really allowed me to do that. I, I stepped back and I could focus on myself, you know, for almost a full year, year and a half. And uh, man, I, I'm telling you, man, it, it did something to me. And I ended up going to, like I said, Universe um, in 2021. And, uh, you know, the show, the show that I got last place in, end up winning. So, you know, that was, uh, that was an amazing feeling. And I'll, I'll tell you, I hired AJ Sims, uh, cement factory, who he is the best coach I've ever had in my entire life. This guy is so in tune with me, you know, so in tune with my health and that, is, you know, that's number one with me too, is my health. And, uh, you know, that, I think that's been the, the biggest thing in my career is changing coaches and hiring a coach that actually, cares about me my health obviously the way I look you know but man I mean we we did one show and done you know and um that was that was pretty awesome and like I said he's just a he's a awesome Christian man and you know he actually made me kind of step back a little bit and um redirect how I coach my own clients you know because I saw the way he is and I mean he's younger than I am and I, I look up to him and I just think he's a you know a great role model. And, and I told him, I told him on, you know, after I turned pro, I said, 
I'm going to tell you one thing, man, I'm, I'm never going anywhere. I was like, I'm with you for the rest of my career. You know, whatever I got to do to make that happen, I'll, I want that to happen because I trust him. Mm. All right. So there's a couple of things that I want to pull, pull out from what you just shared. Uh, yep. Talking about, um, you know, you're, you're winning overalls, right. And, and, you know, uh, competing in bodybuilding, competing in physique sports, like, you know, there's, you, 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 there's gotta be some sort of level of confidence. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, the ego can kind of get in the way and stuff. Absolutely. You know, when you start winning, uh, and you, you're winning overalls and people are talking about you and obviously I'm sure there's, you know, a recognition on social media and gaining followers. Like, Absolutely. how is it though, Daniel, when you, have that, that, that winning streak, but then you keep going to the national level and you're getting fourth call outs. You're getting, you're getting smoked, so to speak, kind of like, as you said, like yep. what, what does that do to an athlete and what does that do to your psyche? And how did that kind of like affect you positively or negatively before you move to the Virgin islands? I mean, honestly, man, I, I'll, I'll be brutally honest with you. I mean, after every one of those shows, I would, I would, go back, you know, shower the tan off, cry, you know, and I mean, it was a, it was a roller coaster. It really was just because I was getting first places and then I'm going and getting my butt kicked. And uh, I just had to reevaluate, man. And I had to reevaluate a lot and a lot of times, and it took a lot of times to really understand what I needed to bring um, because, you know, I'm winning Texas shows, which is, you know, in Texas, I mean, the competition's amazing, you know, I mean, like it's, there's a lot of great guys, a lot of great national level competitors who can go pro, who have gone pro. And, uh, you know, it was it was definitely an emotional roller coaster, um, you know, up until my pro card. Um, but, you know, taking that step back, I, you know, and moving down to the Virgin Islands, I knew what I needed to bring. And it was that wow factor. I needed to bring something that someone else did not bring. And, uh, you know, I, I, I felt like I had the size then you know building up into especially into team universe um but conditioning was it, it was something that i wanted to bring to just a different level um and i did that you know and i think that's really what did it and you know i think tyler liked it you know sandy liked it and uh you know that was that was a great feeling too I, man when i showed up to team universe you know this is my i can't even name how many national shows i've done you know and you know i walk into i mean I'm a small fish in a big pond. I literally texted somebody and told him that. And as soon as I walked into the check-in room, uh, Sandy actually came around the table because I was checking in, you know, doing my height and everything. And she just, she tugged on me. She said, hey, you look amazing. And from right then I was like, all right, man, like I, I think I've brought something a little different, you know? And I mean, the guys who were measuring me, Mateo and all these other guys, they were just, they are like, dude, you look insane. And you know, as a bodybuilder, looking at yourself every single day, you're your own worst critic, you know, and we're not going to go, oh, yeah, I look insane. No, nah, like to me, I was still questioning myself. And, uh, you know, so that boost of confidence right there when I went to check ins was was unbelievable. And uh, but yeah, man, you know, going back to, you know, my previous shows and, you know, the emotional roller coaster, it was uh, it was time for me just to be, you know, to be realistic with myself and go, OK you got to bring something really unreal to the table, bring something different, bring that wow factor. And uh, that's what we did, man. So what was the catalyst for you to move to the Virgin islands of all places? So I'll tell you, man, like I said, I'm from a, you know, small town in Alabama, you know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm not a materialistic person, you know, um, and moving to Dallas, that was, uh, that was one thing that was kind of a culture shock to me moving to Dallas. It was, you know, who has what, who has the biggest house, who's wearing what, who has the best tennis shoes for God's sakes, you know, uh, what are you driving? And I, I can tell you, I fell into that for a little bit. And uh, like I said, man, I just, I took a step back, reevaluated. And I said, this is not who I am. And um, I was actually training some NFL athletes out at Mamba Academy um, in California. And I told one of my clients, I was like, Hey man, I'm going to move. And there he was like, do it, dude. He was like, it might be the best thing you've ever done in your life. You don't have any kids, you know, you're, you move down there, just do it. And not, so seven months later, after I went to the Virgin Islands on a vacation, seven months later, I was there um, because when I went down there, man, I just understood, you know, uh, you know, what peace was, you know, and I'm sitting here looking at all God's creations instead of concrete and buildings everywhere. And, you know, that was, uh, you know, that was a turning point for me. And uh, when I'm, when I went back to Dallas from that vacation, um, 
it was, it was depressing, you know, just, and I, I had to tell myself, I was like, man, you got, I'm getting out of here. And I, I did, I left everything behind. I left friends, family, you know, and, um, but, you know, taking that one year to myself basically turned my whole life around. It really did for the better. You know, I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a very simple person, you know, I like to live simple. Um, and I'm, I actually ended up starting another business while I was down there. So, you know, everything was just a blessing. And uh, then I came back and, you know, won my pro cards. So, you know, it was just, uh, it was a blessing in disguise to do that. Now I want to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper here because yeah. this, this is real life, right? So you go to the Virgin Islands and you're talking about being a simple individual and you uh, earlier, you said you got in tune with yourself during that year at the Virgin Islands. So like what type of soul searching did you do? Like, how did you kind of work through maybe some of the stuff that, uh, you know, maybe some of the bags you were carrying or, or what yep. have you, like, what was the process? What, what did you do to really kind of find yourself and get refocused? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, absolutely, man. So <clears throat> I would say, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you on this too. The first two weeks I moved down there, I had a panic attack. And I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. I, I had a panic attack, broke down. And uh, it was because, you know, my life was so fast in Dallas. I was, I mean, I was at the gym 5 a.m., working till 8 p.m., going home, getting on the laptop, didn't have time to do anything but work. And that was, and that's okay. I love working, um, but I didn't have room for anything else. And uh, so when I moved down to the Virgin Islands, like I said, I had that panic attack called my dad and I, I explained, you know, what was going on. He was like, man, he was like, here's the thing. He was like, you need to find structure, but find structure there. And I did that. I found structure there and I had a, I had a routine every single day. And that routine was, I would wake up 6am, go on my walk, which was, you know, looking at water and, you know, mountains everywhere. And, you know, it was, it was a therapy to me, almost like a meditation every single morning, you know, for 30 minutes. And then I'd come back, I'd get on my laptop, I would work eat, work again, eat, go to the gym, leave from the gym, go sit on the beach and just literally just appreciate life. Literally. That's what I did every single day. And just, you know, like I said, look at God's creations and, uh, just, you know, be thankful for what I did have. And, uh, it, it kind of changed my whole outlook on things. And it was almost like a meditation every single day, you know, to, to find myself and to find, you know, what I really wanted to do in life. And it just, it, it allowed me moving down there, allowed me to actually be able to think. And in Dallas, I could not do that. Um, Dallas brought me a lot of great things. It did. I can't, I can't knock it for that. Um, but I had to get out of that for a little bit. And like I said, I went down there there was a lot of, a lot of emotional things that went on. Um, and I found a gym down there and I'm one of two bodybuilders on that Island. Um, and I found this gym and, you know, I worked out by myself every single day. And, uh, you know, that was, um, that was something I wasn't used to. I wasn't used to working out on my own and it allowed me to just, like I said, be more in tune with myself and, and really be able to focus on what I was doing every single day. Um, and we've had a lot of great athletes come down there. I mean, Dr. Sonny Andrews has come down there and worked out in the gym. David Goggins has been in that gym. Um, uh, Lucky Libra, Andre Ferguson, he's a, you know, he's a good friend of mine. He moved down there for six months. So, you know, I had a lot of great people around me too. And they did that for the same reason. A lot of people come to that island just to get away, to get away from, you know, they're not bothered by people. And uh, so when I had people like that around me, I mean, we'd sit there and talk for hours and, you know, just hours about life and, you know, where you need, what direction you needed to go. And um, it was really cool to have that. And like I said, it, it, it helped me find out who Daniel was and what Daniel needed to do in life. That's powerful, man. I, I, I love, I love that you're uh, just being transparent and sharing that. Cause I, I think that's Absolutely. a very powerful wisdom in terms of fi just finding yourself. If Absolutely. You, if you have no purpose or your purpose is uh, murky, so to speak, like so something's got to give, right? Because uh, yes, life sir. is all about purpose. So um, I want to go back to AJ Sims. Uh, Yep. I've had some conversations with him on uh, uh, Instagram. He actually gave me a cell phone. I've, I've been trying to get a hold of him in terms of a podcast interview for months and months. At some point, it'll happen. But he does seem like a very genuine individual, yes. um, very, very humble, very straightforward. So um, you, you worked with a couple other great coaches. But um, how did you come across AJ? And then why did you kind of 
pull the trigger, so to speak, in hiring him uh, to help you moving forward in your bodybuilding career? So, you know, before the year before Team Universe, um, I have a 212 pro. His name's Christian Simmons. And then another 212 pro, Jason Abair, um, who are great friends of mine, lived in Mobile with me. And the cool thing about those two right there is we've worked out together since we were 19, 20 years old and uh, before any of us were pro. And it's really cool to go home and all three of us be under the same coach and have, you know, had the same goal. And we all we all made that happen because there's not really many pros in the state of Alabama and which was really cool. Um, but I had reached out to Christian Simmons um, and Jason. And I was like, hey, man, I was like, what does it take to hire AJ? And they're like, you know, let me shoot him a message and let's, you know, let's see if you're a good fit. Basically, that's, you know, he uh, I think he's very particular about the people that he that he takes on. Um, and I think he needs to see something in you, you know, in order to, to take that next level. Um, and I think that, you know, those two right there vouch for me. Um, they know how they know how I work my butt off, man. You know, this is what I you know, this is what I do. And, uh, you know, I don't cut corners. And that's one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to waste a coach's time. You know, I hired that coach for a reason. I'm not going to do my own thing. I'm not going to eat my own things. I'm not going to, you know, try to tell him what I'm going to do. That's why I hired him. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of that going on right now. And uh, like I said, man, he, they, they vouched for me. They, they sent him a message and uh, he, sh he told me to shoot him an email. And, um, uh, you know, I actually hired him in December and I didn't even end up getting a plan until March. And I mean, he was, you know, he's a busy guy, you know, he's a busy guy, but we started that prep in March for 16 weeks. And I'm telling you, man, he was there every single day for me, every single day. And uh, it's pretty unreal, a caliber coach like that with that many clients to be able to do that for me. And uh, like I said, man, it, it made me realize like, Hey man, this dude, this dude cares. Like he, he cares about me. Um, like I said, he's a good Christian man. And, you know, we've had those talks too, um, which, you know, you need, I, I think, I think everybody in this industry needs at time, you know, it's a, uh, it's a tough industry to be in. It's very, you know, it's a vain industry, you know, and there's a lot of that going on. And uh, to have a coach that, not only as a genius, you know, it, it writing, you know, my meal plans and my workouts and, you know, staying in tune with me, but to have that, you know, awesome guy in your corner, also on your shoulder going, Hey, this is the right thing to do. This is what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a really, uh, it's a humbling thing to have him as a coach, to be honest with you. Very blessed. Now, earlier when you brought up AJ, you said that he, um, just the way he coached you actually caused you uh, to change the way that you were coaching some of your clients or all of your clients. So why don't you talk about how AJ influenced you to kind of level you up as, as a coach yourself? Absolutely. And, and that's the thing is, you know, with AJ going back to, you know, how many clients he has, I mean, this guy has clients all over the world. He's got WWE wrestlers, you know, he's got not just bodybuilders. Um, you know, he, he's actually made a post before, um, and I don't know if he even remembers, but it was a screenshot of his home screen on his phone. And just in that green box of his text messages, it said 1,655 text messages, you know? And so I, I looked at that and I look at how quickly he responds to me on my check-ins. And I just know how busy the man is. I know he's got a family, you know, he's got all these things going on. And for him to care that much and to get back to me so quickly with voice messages too, you know, he, he voice messages me and, Hey brother, you know, you're looking great. Let's do this. Let's, you know, he's very detailed. And uh, you know, like I said, it, it, it made me step back and go, okay, how can I be better for my clients? How can I be, I mean, even in just life in general, how can I be better for my friends, my family? Um, because this guy has so much going on but he's so in tune with his clients and, you know, he cares about his clients. And that, that to me just spoke so much volume, man. It really did. So let's talk about you as a coach. Um, you just mentioned that um, you had a client of yours win an overall uh, yesterday. Yep. So um, when did you start coaching yourself and talk about the evolution of being a coach? Cause um, you know, a lot of people want to bag on like uh, you know, coaching in terms of like, Hey, like this, uh, just because uh, you got an online certification, somebody started yeah. coaching. Well, 
everybody has to start somewhere. So that's right. Um, that, that's just part of anything in life, whether you have a college degree or not, or right. a certification or not, we all start somewhere and there's going to be an evolution uh, in that process. But when did you start coaching and just talk about that evolution for yourself as a coach, maybe even talk about your client that won the overall yesterday. Yeah. Just talk about some of those highlights as a coach and what you've learned being a coach. Absolutely. So I started coaching back in 2010. I was a personal trainer. Um, you know, I, I really wasn't as serious, obviously, as I am now. Um, but it was something I always wanted to get into. Um, and I actually started writing plans. I, I wrote plans for free, you know, just for my friends, my family. I did have some athletes at the time. Um, and I was writing things for free. I was doing, you know, multiple diets on myself. I mean, I've done vegetarian, keto, pescatarian. I've done everything that you can think of just to be, just to basically see what it does to my body. I want to see how it reacts. Um, so, you know, moving forward to 2014, I was, you know, on and off for those four years, uh, you know, doing some coaching, doing some personal training. And I'd actually gone out to California to visit one of my friends, <clears throat> excuse me, who was, uh, he coached guys at the combine for NFL. And uh, I went to his place in Hermosa Beach, and his next door neighbor was Marshawn Lynch um, and a couple other players for the Seattle Seahawks. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, one of the defensive ends, who's a great friend of mine today, his name's Cassius Marsh. Um, he's played defensive end for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's played for the Seattle Seahawks, 49ers. And uh, he looked at me, and I had my meals because I was competing also. And he was like, what do you do? And I was like, I was like, man, I'm a bodybuilder. He was like, no, no, no. What do you do with your food? I was like, man, I eat every two to three hours. You know, this is what I do. He goes, I want to look like you. And I was like, all right. So from then 2014 is really when I started getting more serious with it, looking into more certifications, strength and conditioning, things like that. And uh, man, before too long, you know, word of mouth is big, you know, that, that was, and I just happened to meet the right people at the right time. And that kind of got me, you know, the athlete side of it. I, I had probably 15 to 20 NFL guys within the next year um, who were calling me. I'd had multiple conversations with coaching staffs of the Buffalo Bills, Tennessee Titans. I mean, I've, I've been there, you know, with their linemen. And that was my main thing was linemen. Uh, I trained a lot of defensive uh, linemen and offensive linemen. And um, so that kind of transitioned into more of the competing side as well. Um, you know, people were seeing again, how, you know, I was evolving with these guys, you know, being there for them. And um, it, like I said, it transitioned over into bodybuilding because we know in bodybuilding, man, there's coaches out there right now. They're, you know, charging, you know, three, three fifty a month. And they're basically, it's like, Hey, give me your money, which I've had these coaches. I've had these coaches, give me your money. Here's your plan. Basically. I hope you do all right. You know? And uh, you know, that was, that was something that I, that I really took pride in was, you know, I, I got back to my clients, you know, as quickly as I could, um, you know, and I, I tried to, you know, not fanboy these athletes, you know, and it was more like, hey, this is a business and this is, uh, you know, I do want to create a relationship out of this. Um, but we created relationships as we went and uh, it just made me, you know, it made me really love what I did. Um, and like I said, you know, going from 2014 to now, um, I only take on about 20, 20 to 25 competitors a year. And the reason why I do that, I have over a thousand lifestyle clients right now um, that I, yeah, that I coach. And uh, so I have over a thousand lifestyle clients, but I only take on that many bodybuilders and, you know, bikini athletes for the reason, because, you know, just as well as I do, this sport is so much different than any other sport. And I feel like if I'm going to train bodybuilders and I'm going to have bodybuilders, you know, and bikini athletes, whatever they do. Um, whatever division they're in, I want to be so in tuned and key with them. You know, I want to, I want to give them all the attention. You know, that's, that's really what I want to do. I don't want to have 150 athletes and, you know, not be able to get back to each of them. I just don't, I don't believe in that. And I, like I said, I've had that before. Um, so me coming up with a system like AJ Sims has, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that, you know, because he does have all those athletes. Um, but he's a guru, man. You know, that's, that's in it. And, here I am, you know, so many years into it, I'm still learning every single day, you know, how to be a better coach. I, that's excellent. Now, somebody that is maybe at the beginning of their coaching experience or coaching journey, or somebody that maybe wants to get into that, um, 
why don't you give us two or three kind of recommendations because there is so much information out there. There's so much, uh, you know, false information. There's so many uh, fake gurus and fake this yep. and fake that through social media, but there are some great coaches. There are great Absolutely. people out there that genuinely want to help people and are helping people. So yep. how can people that are beginning this uh, start? How can they do it right? What, what are some suggestions? What are some uh, words of wisdom? Uh, as far as being a coach? Yes. You know, I think uh, as far as being a coach is like, you know, like I said, in the beginning of this, this entire podcast is, you know, be a good person. You know, I think once you get that reputation, you're a good, you, you got to be a good person in this industry, man. That is, you know, that's number one. Um, because like we just spoke about, there's, there's a lot of guys out there and women um, who just, you know, do this for the money. And I think, uh, I think, you know, finding how to read somebody is, is number one. But so if you're wanting to get into coaching, you know, be that good person, be someone, be someone that people can trust, you know, that's, that's going to go a long way. Um, and let them know that you're there for them every step of the way. I think when you let someone know that you're there every step of the way, and it's not for the money, you know, it's, it's, it goes a long way. It really does. Um, and, you know, go the extra mile, take time out of your day to text that person, to write that person, see how they're feeling. And that's one thing AJ does with me. He'll, he'll randomly write me and be like, Hey brother, how you feeling? That's awesome. I know, I know you're a very, very busy man. That's awesome that you can do that. Um, you know, and one thing that I have tried to do with my clients, just how, how I am in, here in Louisiana is <clears throat> be there for my clients, wherever they are. You know, if I can, if I can go that extra mile and fly to where they are, you know, no matter, I know it, it especially right now, gas prices are up, you know, th things do cost a lot. But again, that that makes them realize like, hey, this, you know, this person cares um, a whole, whole lot. So, you know, just wrapping it up in a nutshell, I think, you know, having that trust is number one, having that trust, having that client trust you, having that client know that you're going to be there for them every step of the way, and that you will go that extra mile for them. Those three things right there, I believe, is really what a coach needs to have. Mm, perfect. Now, I want to ask you, Daniel. Uh, obviously now being an IFBB pro athlete, and you mentioned earlier that NFL guy saw you eating your meals out in California. He's like, Hey man, like what's, what's going on there. I want to look like you. How important is it, uh, for you and just, uh, people in general that are coaches, how, how important is it to kind of practice what you preach, but how important is it in terms of growing your business as a coach, uh, to kind of have, um, you know, that physique to kind of back yep. up what you are trying to get people to do themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, I, you know, uh, Mike Rashid, who's actually a, a good, he's a friend of mine as well. He said it best. And I'm a true believer in this. And I, I could be totally wrong, but I'm a true believer in this. I believe that your coach has to look like a badass. You know, I, I really do. And, you know, I wouldn't want to take advice from somebody who I did not want to look like. Um, you look at AJ Sims, the dude is shredded right now. I mean, he, <laughs> he looks like he can walk on stage this weekend. I, that's inspiring to me. If my coach can look like that, what can he do to me? You know? And I think that's, I think that goes a long way too. And that's what I try to do for my clients. You know, bodybuilding's brought me that I can, I want to look a certain way. I want to inspire people. Um, I want people to, you know, my clients, especially to look at me and go, you know, he's disciplined, you know, he's got respect for himself, you know, that that's what I want for myself too. And I think that again, goes a long way as a coach. And I think every coach should strive to be like that. Mm. So the last thing about uh, coaching, and then I want to transition to some other talk, social yeah. media, how do you personally uh, utilize social media uh, to grow your businesses um, to, you know, gain clients? If you do that, how, how, how do you, uh, how do you use that platform or those platforms for positive in your life? So, you know, and that's, you just said it right there. I think, you know, bringing positivity into people's lives and being real. I think that, uh, I think that's everything, you know, there's, uh, I could, I could name 20,000 experiences I've had. I could tell you that Instagram, Facebook, all these social media platforms are fake. They're fake. You know, I mean, people only are going to put what, is best on their Instagram, you know, pages, their Facebook pages. Um, and that's, you know, one thing I try to bring to everybody is, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be realistic. I want to be a real person, um, real life problems. You know, that's, you know, that's, uh, just in the quotes that I use on my, you know, on my pages, things that I talk about, 
Um, I want to be real. And I can tell you, just even thinking back to it, <clears throat> in the last year, I might have one time put out that I'm taking on clients. It's more word of mouth right now. Um, now I do have, you know, my website on my bio and things like that, but um, everything's come word of mouth in the last, you know, year or two years. Um, and people just, you know, I think people are drawn to like what we just talked about, you know, looking a certain way, you know, you know, talking a certain way and, and really just being, you know, an all around good human and going, Hey, you know, I'm here, I'm here to help you. And if you need that help, I'm going to be right here the entire day, you know, and I think that goes a long way. And like I said, I haven't, I can't even tell you the last time I went out on my Instagram and was like, Hey, I'm opening up, you know, five spots right now. I don't do that. You know, I don't have to do that. And that's, you know, that's a cool thing, man. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not out there, you know, trying to just pull in business. I, I want it to be their decision. People know that I'm a coach, you know, people know that I compete and uh, I want that to be their decision. And if they feel comfortable enough to go, Hey man, would you write me a diet and a workout? Would you, you know, would you help me along my journey? I'm going to do it every step of the way. Excellent. All right. Beachside supplements. Uh, did that come to be, it was that the second business when you were in the Virgin islands. If so, yes, sir. Talk, talk about that. I I'm uh, curious about uh, beachside supplements. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, Andreas Soto and Nino uh, Mansoor, they're my business partners in that. And Andreas, me and Andreas go back about 10 years and we both ran supplement shops in Dallas um, about, you know, 10 years ago. And uh, we've always had that dream, you know, of, of running our own supplements, creating our own supplements. And we, I mean, over the last decade, we've talked about it and we've gone, hey, let's do this, let's do this. And nothing really ever seemed like the right thing. And I'm glad that we waited because when I moved down to the Virgin Islands, he was like, hey, man, he was like, I'm, I've got a name. He was like, let's, I mean, it fits perfectly for what you're doing. He ran it by me and I was like, dude, this is perfect. And, you know, being in this industry for so long, I know what works. I know what doesn't work, you know, and there's a lot of products out there where people just throw all this stuff in there and, you know, they're like, oh, well, it's high stem, you know, yeah, it may have a lot of caffeine, but that's about all it has in it. So, you know, Andreas is, uh, he was great for that, man. We've, we, we spent the time and the money to come up with products that my NFL athletes can use. Um, and I'm talking about that have patent ingredients. Every single one of our products have patent ingredients, whether it be ashwagandha, um, lion's mane, you know, just good things that actually make a product work. Um, and they're clean. And that's, you know, that's something that we wanted to bring, you know, my clientele and his clientele, he actually owns a supplement shop in Dallas. And uh, we wanted to bring them something that was special. And that was something that actually worked, you know, and instead of going, hey, here's our 500 milligram of caffeine pre-workout that, you know, it's going to get you amped. Well, yeah, it does have a lot of caffeine in it, but we also have things in there that, you know, that work. We have plant-based products in our, in our pump products. Um, you know, we, we've got all kind of stuff, man. And it's, uh, again, that's been a blessing in, in itself too, you know, just to come out with a product that people love. And uh, that's one thing we're trying to spread right now is, you know, what our product does, how it can make you feel. And I, man, I take this product around everywhere. I'll let people, try, you know, try my pre-workout, my pump products, you know, my, my fat burners, and I've gotten no bad feedback yet. And it's, it's pretty cool to, you know, it's pretty cool to see that, but we're in uh, we're in about 37 stores right now. So um, it's, uh, it's been, like I said, it's been a blessing, man. And that B side is it's uh, we're coming up. That's for sure. You'll be hearing about it. I promise. So, uh, if, if people are interested in learning more about beachside supplements, where can they go? And then, um, just from your perspective, uh, in terms of supplements that we can maybe go into a, a GNC or what have you and buy off the shelf, what are maybe your top two or three supplements for the listeners, the, the viewers to kind of, uh, um, check out, not just with beachside, but just in general, yeah. Uh, if, if you don't mind recommending that. Absolutely. So uh, beachsidesups.com, you can get our subs there or anybodysupplements.com. Uh, those are our two main ports really um, for ordering. And again, oh, hold on just a second. Sorry. You're good, you're good. <laughs> you got a phone call, right? Yeah. Let me send that to voicemail. Um, all right. So um, beachsidesups.com or anybodysups.com. That's like I said, our main ports. And uh, man, we, uh, we take a lot of pride in our supplements, man. And that's, you know, and once you try them, you're going to really understand it. And, uh, but you know, if I was to walk into any, 
supplement shop right now and, and, you know, give advice for, you know, two products, two or three products. I mean, the, the main one for me is isolate protein. Uh, I like to find a good isolate protein. I think that's, uh, you know, for a lot of people out there, just regular whey is going to bloat people and, you know, make you feel like, and that's kind of the bad rap protein has like, oh, it makes me bloated, you know, isolate protein, you know, hydrolyzed protein, those two right there. That's my go-to on a daily basis. I, it's hard for me to actually switch. Um, another one that, you know, I think a lot of people just don't take a lot of pride in is vitamin C. You know, I'm, I'm popping two and 3000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C every single day. And I think that's really important. Um, you know, obviously for immune health, but you know, look at the sicknesses that have been going around. I think it's super important, you know, to have, especially as a bodybuilder, man, to have your immune system above par, you got to have that, you know, there's a lot of bad things that have been happening. And, um, I, like I said, man, I'm, I'm all about health right now. That's, uh, that's my number one thing. And, um, that'll never go away. Uh, but if I had another one to choose uh, something that I take almost year round is L-carnitine. I love L-carnitine. I love the way it makes me feel. Um, you know, it, uh, it gives me a boost every single day, even though it's a non-stem, I, I still feel it. I feel like it keeps my fat down, you know, year round, um, my body fat percentage and, those three right there, I'm, I'm, I'm super key on, man. Love it. Now, do you guys with Beachside Supplements, do you guys have an isolate out uh, or not yet? Yes, we sure do. We actually have three flavors. And that was, you know, that was one thing we wanted to give everybody was, you know, these big brands out there, these top 100 brands, all of them have these, you know, isolate proteins. And uh, I'm sure you, you've tried Dimatize ISO 100. Uh, that, you know, that was something I told my manufacturer, I was like, Hey man, I was like, if it, if it doesn't taste this good or better, I don't want it. You know? And we, we, man, we nailed it with the, we have cookie dough, lava cake and vanilla breeze. And, uh, man, they're absolutely incredible. I was super happy about it. You know, I had to have the cookie dough and what it, ha it has chunks of cookie in there, like almost like Oreo cookie. So, you know, being on prep, that is a, that's a lifesaver at the end of a shake to have those cookies. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, we wanted to bring something that was, like I said, super clean, lactose-free, sugar-free, fat-free, carb-free. And, uh, and it tastes like it is loaded down with sugar. And it, it's, it's an amazing protein. It really is. Excellent. All right. So, Daniel, we're going to start wrapping up our conversation. Yep. Um, before we do, though, I want to kind of get into um, what your competition plans are going forward now that you are an IFBB pro. Um, what's next for you, Daniel? So currently I'm 11 weeks out of the Tampa pro. Um, that is, uh, yeah, coach, uh, AJ, he's confident, man. He, uh, he's, he's really confident in this pro debut. Um, we're, we're already looking crazy at 11 weeks out, which is, you know, it's mind blowing to me to even send him my check-ins and then the great feedback I get from him. But I think the whole idea behind it was, you know, Hey, if we're going to do a show, let's do a big show and let's get compared to the best. You know, that's, uh, that's you know, like I told you in the very beginning of this podcast, I'm competitive, man. I don't want to do a small show. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be compared to somebody that people don't know. You know, I heard Breon Ansley's doing this show and I want to stand next to him. You know, I really do. I want to stand next to him and some of the other greats and see where I, you know, end up. Uh, I think that'd be really awesome. And, you know, if this show doesn't go well, go back to the drawing board and let's do exactly what the judges want. You know, bring them exactly what they want for the next show, their next year, whatever I got to do. Um, but Tampa Pro is definitely number one on the list. Um, and then obviously the Texas pro is the next weekend. So um, I'm hoping to probably knock those two out, depending on how Tampa goes. Um, I would love to do the Texas pro and be in front of my hometown crowd, you know, in Dallas. I think that'd be absolutely amazing. Um, and then from then, you know, obviously the, the whole goal, man, is to get qualified to go to the Olympia. That's uh, that's been on my mind since I was literally, you know, starting in this. I mean, I've watched it since I was a kid, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, everybody, uh, all the big bodybuilding greats. That's, uh, that's definitely my number one goal, man. So if I can get qualified to go, it'd be a dream come true. It really would. Awesome, man. I, I love it that you guys are going big or going home. Oh yeah, absolutely. Pro. And I, uh, I subscribe to Brianna Ansley's, uh, YouTube channel. I know that I heard him, uh, say that he's going to compete in that. So man, that's, yep. that's pretty cool. If you get those first call outs with him, man, uh, uh two time, Mr. Olympia, that's, uh, that's, that's excellent. What is kind of, uh, you uh, you kind of mentioned that you want to get on that Olympia stage. Is that kind of like your ultimate bodybuilding goal then is to step on the Olympia stage? That's the ultimate goal, man. That's, that's the Super Bowl right there. You know, that's, uh, I would, you know, and unless I was competitive, 
Like, I mean, obviously it would, it would be a, a, a long, a longevity in the career, but you know, that's definitely my ultimate goal. I mean, even if I got last call out, like I did in my first national shows, you know, even, even being up there on that stage with that caliber of, of athlete is going to be an honor. You know, that's, that's an honor in itself. I mean, even to be an IFBB pro to be up there with these guys, you know, is an honor. So yeah, the, the ultimate goal, man, is, is the Olympia. And I, I, I'm not going to stop until I get there. You know, that's, that's, uh, that's going to happen. I, I have a good feeling, you know, I, I really do. And I think, uh, you know, I'm going to bring something this year that's going to be pretty special. And I think, you know, each year from here, I'm just going to continue to, to build and build and bring something more special every year. And I think it's really cool, Daniel. I mean, uh, we're, this is the first generation of, uh, you know, what we now call classic physique and every year, it's just going to continue to get more and more competitive to be able to be a part of that first generation. That's really exciting too, you know? So um, I kind of like to ask most of my guests this question just to kind of wrap things up. Um, So I'm going to ask you as well, Daniel, what do you feel like bodybuilding has taught you or what do you feel like bodybuilding has given you? I can, man, I'll give you both. Uh, What it's taught me and given me is a hell of a mental strength and what I mean by that is you know to go through these preps for 16 20 weeks whatever it may be and it it brings me just a sense of like just this mental warrior man like it it, it puts me on a different level um it really does and that's what I appreciate about bodybuilding is you know less than a percent of percentage of the population does this and I love that you know what I mean I love I want to do what other people can't do um I want to be able to inspire for those who physically can't even do this, you know? And I think that that's, you know, those two things right there is, is really what I, what I strive to do, man. And I think that, you know, bodybuilding's given me uh, a platform to, you know, to inspire and to, to help people, you know, in the long run. Excellent. All right. So Daniel, before I wrap up our conversation here and do the outro, um, I want to kind of just give you the platform to share any final thoughts, any final yes, words sir. that you might have. Um, any, any shout outs where you want to send people again for beachside supplements, for coaching, for anything like that, your Instagram, anything that you kind of want to share with us, uh, go ahead, please. And then I'll, I'll, uh, wrap up the conversation. Absolutely. So for obviously the, you know, the subs beachside subs.com, um, you can use code diesel for 10% off, uh, my coaching, man, I like people to message me. I like to be personable. So if you want to message me on, uh, Instagram, shoot me a direct message. Let's talk about your goals. Let's talk about what you want to do. Um, like I said, I think being personable with, you know, with, a, with a client is, is number one. Um, and I love getting back with people, you know, as quickly as I can. That's, you know, that's the number one thing. Um, I want to give a shout out to, um, you know, my training partners, Jonathan Arnett, uh, Gabe, uh, Philpot, Gabriel Philpot. He's also a client of mine, Demetrius Ford. Um, and also my coach, AJ Sims. He is, uh, an amazing human being and I couldn't have done this without him. All right. So Daniel, I just want to, again, personally, thank you so much for taking some time out of your Sunday, man, to share your story, uh, chop it up with me and just kind of give yes, some of your wisdom and insights to all the viewers and listeners. It's uh, it's greatly appreciated. Okay. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. For sure. Um, all of you who are tuning into another episode of Behind the Muscle Podcast, I just want to say thank you so much to you. If it wasn't for you, the podcast wouldn't exist. A couple of quick things here as we wrap up our conversation with Daniel today. Um, If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, If you're listening to this on another platform, I still would encourage you to go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. That's really important because I release all these Behind the Muscle podcast episodes first on YouTube, and then I distribute them to iTunes and the other podcast platforms. So please hit that subscribe button. That's very helpful. Just as I mentioned, we are on iTunes. We are on some of the other popular podcast platforms. So if YouTube isn't your thing or it's easier for you to listen on another uh, platform, hit go to iTunes, go to some of the other uh, podcast platforms and you can find Behind the Muscle podcast on there as well. And then finally, before I close out this conversation with Daniel, one other favor, take this episode with Daniel Sullivan, share it on your Instagram stories. Make sure you tag uh, Daniel tag behind the muscle so that we know that you listen specifically to Daniel's episode and you found great value in it, which I know you did. And then I will leave you all with this. Remember behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.